congratulations on having a baby. And more so, congratulations on trying to get out of the house. It is no small feat in those first few months. So you're ready to take this motley crew of dirty diapers and sleepless nights on the road? Well, congrats to you. We are gonna show you everything you need to know to take that first flight. Sweetie, we're doing it. I feel like I'm gonna cry. With a baby. But before we get started, here's a few things to know. First off, one, most people are actually very forgiving and very helpful. You'll find that when you actually get out there on the road. And the other thing is, this is our number one tip to most people, just go ahead and rip that Band-Aid off. It's not as bad as you think it's going to be. First breakdown. No amount of research or planning is going to eliminate all these stress and worries that you think are going to happen when you're out there on the road. So you've heard us say it before and we will say it again. Feel the fear and do it anyway, because this time you're gonna be a little bit nervous and scared to fly with your baby and that's okay. Go do it. It'll all be okay. We promise it'll be okay. Also, watch until the end where we give you all of our top gear recommendations in one concise list. So in this video, we're basically gonna break down the entire process. So we're gonna start from booking, go through all the tips for that, traveling to the airport, when you're in the airport, and then the flight. So let's get started. Okay. First up is booking your flights. Now, when it comes to booking a flight with a family, you want to make sure that you're in good seats. Now, I prefer to be in a window seat because I am breastfeeding and I feel like there is more privacy. Scott will then book the aisle and we will pray that no one gets in the middle. And I don't think anyone wanna sit, wants to sit in a row with a baby anyway. And for the most part, we've gotten pretty lucky with that. I would recommend not booking in one of the first rows, but book a little bit further back. So. If you're traveling with a baby, you have a couple of options. You can book a seat for your baby, which would be ideal, but obviously that's more money. So we often book a lap child ticket. Now, children fly free within the United States, which is wonderful. Sometimes you are charged taxes on that child, but if you're flying internationally, they're usually going to charge you 10% of the ticket plus taxes. Now it varies by airline, so check your specific airline rules. And that is children under two. Yes, a lap child is a child under two. The other thing is you want to be sure to bring a copy of your birth certificate. Now we have not been asked for it yet. We've been on quite a few flights with our newborn, but we have heard stories of people who got to the airport and they didn't have a copy of it. And it wasn't TSA who asked for it. It wasn't security. It was actually the airline who wanted to see a copy of it. And so people then had to stress, call our pediatrician. So you just want to have that as a just in case measure. Okay, another tip for you guys planning a trip is to plan a flight time around the sleep schedule. So that means that you're not gonna wanna take that first flight out at 6 a.m. in the morning. That means you're gonna have to get your baby up at like four. No one wants to do that. No one wants to wake the sleeping baby. So try to take a flight that will be leisurely for you and your baby so you're not rushing out the door or having to wake the baby up. Yeah, it might seem like you're gonna get more vacation if you leave super early and get there, but it's just not gonna be a fun journey. Just consider it a travel day and write it off. The next thing is be sure to have an extra change of clothes for mom and dad on the plane. And baby. And baby, <laughs> obviously. So you might have a checked bag and all your clothes could be in there and there is nothing like getting spit up or a blowout all over your clothes and not having something to change into. Next up is one of my favorite travel tips because I feel like it's a big secret amongst parents. Uh, this is the bassinet. Now, there are bassinets on long haul flights and intercontinental flights. So call your airline when you're booking your ticket and see where the bassinets are located on the airplane. Now, they are usually first come, first serve. So. Sometimes they let you reserve them on the phone and sometimes you have to go to the gate agent when you, after you check in to make sure that you can get that bassinet. Now what these are, are bassinets that actually hang in front of you and they are usually located in the bulkhead seat. So if there is a bassinet on your flight, I would highly recommend booking the bulkhead seat in economy. And there are also bassinets in business class that are usually built into the actual business class seats. So if you are flying business class, call your airline to see where are those bassinet seats located and try to reserve that exact seat. Even if you're not flying business class, if you're flying yeah. a longer haul flight, something of maybe say five plus hours, give the airline a call and see if they have it. LA to New York, they're probably gonna have a bassinet on that plane. So what we've seen is business class has a built-in bassinet and economy has a removable bassinet. 
but all of the bassinets are located in the bulkhead seats. The next is a little piece of technology that will alleviate a lot of stress, and that is these simple Apple AirTags. Just shove these in your precious items that you have to either check or gate check. So if you have a stroller that you're gonna gate check, just tuck it in a little hidden pocket, and you can be sure to know that that is on the plane with you as you're traveling to your destination. The next thing to save space in your luggage, you don't need to pack everything that you're going to need at your destination. You have to remember that most places you're going have stores there as well. So for example, diapers, these are big, they take up a lot of space. If you're going to a vacation for a week, you don't need to pack a week's worth of diapers, just pack enough for your flight there with a few extras, you know, emergencies, and then you can get diapers at the destination. Same thing with toys. If you're going to a beach and you need some cheap sand toys, those could be a few bucks at a local CVS and then you can leave them at your local Airbnb or donate them before you leave. Next up is traveling to the airport. Okay, firstly, you're going to want to allow plenty of time to get to the airport because you know how hard it is to get out of the house just to go to the grocery store. I mean, imagine going to an airport. So just give yourself plenty of time so that you can build in time for mistakes. And secondly, you're going to want to bring a bottle with you on the road in case baby gets hungry. Whether you're breastfeeding or whether you're using formula, just put it in a bottle and have it accessible so that baby won't be fussy on the way to the airport. The next thing, this is totally a dad move, and that is be sure to do two things. One, make sure that you know how to install your car seat in another car. For example, you know we take an Uber to the airport that was the first time that I actually had to use the seatbelt straps because at home we've got the nice clip-in base in our car and that's a little bit different. So you wanna make sure you're not doing it the first time when a taxi shows up and everyone's looking at you and have all the stress. You wanna be sure you're very comfortable doing it. And if you wanna take an extra step and be extra secure that you know you're doing it right, go to your local fire department and they will be sure that you've installed it properly. The other thing, same thing with testing out your equipment. You wanna make sure you know how to break everything down. So if you've got a stroller that collapses and maybe it's a carry-on or even a gate check, you wanna make sure you know how to properly collapse it and remove any adapters. This was somewhat of an embarrassing mistake as we took our first flight. I didn't know how to remove the car seat adapter from our stroller. And as you're trying to board and everyone else is boarding the plane and you're wondering, do I still have space for my bag as you see the countless people get on there? That is not a good feeling. So, you know, just basically do a dry run of all your equipment. And now the last thing, this is just a good travel tip in general. Everything needs to have a place, meaning that everything needs to have a pocket and it goes inside your bags or it is clipped on so that it cannot be forgotten. Any loose items, Colette, <laughs> That's my fault. tend to get forgotten. So if you've got a pillow, a blanket, whatever it is, Try to make sure that you've got a spot for those inside your bag so that when you are getting ready to board the plane, if you need to, you can just shove it right into that pocket or when you're exiting the plane, same thing. You don't wanna have your hands full because you're gonna be carrying a baby. Okay, congrats, you made it to the airport. We're getting there, guys. So when you are going through security, you can bring over 100 milliliters or three ounces of liquid with you because you have a baby. This means you can bring water for your formula. This means you can bring juice. This means you can bring your breast milk with you. Doesn't mean I can bring beer? No, you can't bring beer. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> so if you're about to go through TSA, just let the TSA agent know, hey, I am traveling with breast milk or whatever your liquid you're traveling with. And most likely if it is frozen, they won't be able to test it. They will just say, okay, noted. If it is not frozen, they're most likely going to test it. Now, when they test it, I would recommend just kindly asking, hey, would you mind putting on a clean pair of gloves when you test the milk? Totally fine, I haven't had any issues whatsoever. And I would say about 50% of the time they have tested my milk and 50% of the time they have not. Now, when I am traveling with my breast milk, I do not travel with a cooler. I travel with something really, really fun. It's called a Ceres Chill, which is like a big thermos for my breast milk and it keeps it cold for up to 20 hours. It's been awesome. It fits right in my carry-on bag. It has a place. <laughs> Why does it have a place? <laughs> because you tell me to have a place. <laughs> and it makes it super simple to carry my milk with me in an inconspicuous way. Now here are a few more tips for inside the airport. One, wear your baby. Now we love the Ergo Baby Carrier. There are some other options out there as well, but we found that just makes life a little bit easier to carry the baby to the airport, especially in security 
versus putting them in your stroller and then taking them out and then putting them back in. So that's number one. Number two, have a little play mat in case there's delays. You're gonna have delays, it's inevitable. So we have a simple, what is it called, like the trunk? We're gonna put a link below. We'll put a link below what it is, it. yeah. <laughs> but it's just a simple play mat that you can lay out and have a clean space for your baby to have some tummy time. And as an adult, it's kind of nice to just lay down in the airport because you don't get to do that anywhere else. <laughs> get, your kid gives you permission. <laughs> it's true. The other thing, another reminder, make sure you have your birth certificate. As we said before, they might ask for it and they might not, but it is just better safe than sorry. And the final thing is, if timing works out, change your baby before you board the plane. Babies don't always cooperate. They might have a blowout right as you board the plane or right as you're taking off. But if you can, give them a fresh diaper to start the flight off on, a, on the right foot. Okay, it's time to board the flight, guys. So you have two free gate check items when you're boarding. Now these can be your stroller, your car seat, whatever you're bringing, gate check those. We prefer to do that instead of checking it in the beginning of the flight because we just think it's less handling, less time for things to get lost, and less time to for things to get damaged. Plus we use the stroller in the airport. Yes. Sometimes we use the stroller as a bag carrier. Yes, that's usually <laughs> what we do. It's very helpful actually. So for these gate check items, I highly recommend getting a bag for them so they can be easily, easily identifiable and so that they don't get dirty because planes are disgusting. And <laughs> secondly, for these gate check items, you will need a bag tag. So we recommend prior to boarding, going up to the gate agent and saying, hey, I need two gate check item bags, or bag tags, and they will give them to you. You can put them on your items so that it'll be a more streamlined boarding process for you. And tip for the gate checked items, put the bag tag, if you're putting them in a bag, put the tag on the bag, not on the item, because then if the item gets lost, they may not know to open the bag and look for the tag itself. Great. And we also on the bag, write our name and phone number in big bold letters in the off chance that it does get lost. Yes. It was probably the biggest reason Colette wanted to have a baby. And that <laughs> is that we get to board first on flights. Right. That's right. On almost all airlines, you get to board early with a little baby. So they don't always announce it though. Some airlines actually call out, you know, kids, families traveling with children if they're ready to board. Some airlines don't, so you just have to go ask if you can board. But yes, that is a nice benefit to give you a little extra time to break down the stroller or pack the car seat up and make sure that it's gate checked properly. Now, we love to use the Bugaboo Butterfly Stroller. We've had a few different travel strollers and that has become our favorite. It's the right blend of durability and ruggedness, but it also packs down into a carry-on size. That's right, it can go either below your seat or above in the overhead. It's fantastic. And also, something about the Bugaboo Butterfly is that you can close it and open it with one hand. So if you take the baby out of the stroller, put her on your hip, and then just break it down. It's really awesome. Like, I love this stroller. And it actually fits through the aisle. Uh, a lot of flight attendants have been fascinated as I've pulled up and one, they're shocked. They said, this is gonna pack down. They didn't believe it. And the other thing is they keep telling me it's not gonna fit in the aisle and it, it's just the right size to fit down the aisle. <laughs> and we'll put a link for the Bugaboo Butterfly below as well. All right, as for a diaper bag, we actually bring two diaper bags with us. We have a bag within a bag. Now, this is because the bigger diaper bag, which is the No Reception Club bag, it is awesome. I mean, it's. It looks like a camera bag because every everything has a place. You see, it's very yeah, good. Like that. It's efficient. It's an awesome bag, and it's inconspicuous. Like it looks really cool. It doesn't look like I'm carrying this yucky diaper bag. And then I bring a Kibu fanny pack diaper bag with me inside of the No Reception Club bag. And this is because when I go to the bathroom or Scott goes to the bathroom to change the baby, we don't wanna bring a huge backpack with us. We wanna have something really small to go along with these small bathrooms. So this just goes around your waist or around your shoulder and it can pack about you know five to seven diapers in it, your wipes, your creams, all of that. Um, so we'll put links below to those as well. And the Kibu is nice to bring out and about if you don't wanna have the full size diaper bag. It does take up a little extra space inside the, the main cargo diaper bag, mm -hmm. but it's all trade off. So those are the two things that we've found work for us. And the no reception bag is also great because it slides over your suitcase. So just makes things easy. And it also has a 
laptop case for the parents, which is great. So that's my carry-on bag that, I, that goes everywhere with me. Here's another perk about traveling with a baby. You can bring an extra bag on board. You can bring your diaper bag. Now, if you are flying United Airlines or American Airlines, you can bring a diaper bag in addition to your two items. If you were flying Delta, you cannot. So check your specific airline rules. They vary based on the airline. Also, if you're bringing breast pumps, they are known as medical devices, so they do not count towards your baggage allowance. Good tip. How about the stroller? The stroller does not count towards your baggage allowance, and nor does the car seat. So car seat and stroller can be gate checked. Stroller can also be brought on. Car seat can be brought on if it's in the seat, but not in the overhead. And speaking of car seats, if you're going to bring one on, one, you need to have a seat for that car seat if you're gonna buckle it in. And two, there is a little uh, sticker at the bottom of it that basically says that this seat has certification for airline travel. Now you wanna be sure to take a picture of that sticker just in case the flight attendant will come ask you for proof that this is a certified car seat after you've got the child in there or you've got it all buckled in. So uh, maybe they will actually ask to see the sticker itself, but yeah, just take a sticker of it and you'll probably get asked for it. Sorry, what did I say? <laughs> a, sticker a sticker of it. <laughs> so take a picture of it because you'll probably get asked for this more likely on international flights than you would on domestic flights. When it comes to changing a baby on a flight, don't fret. It's been done thousands of times before and you can do it as well. Now, if you happen to get lucky, no one sits in the middle seat and you're pretty good and it's not a stinky one, just go ahead and change the baby right there. I think it's okay. This might be a controversial item. Some people will say that is a big no-no. We've talked to other parents and they've said, just go ahead and do it. Now, also, if you wanna to go to the bathroom, which we also do that too, ask the flight attendant. Most of the time, if there is one that actually has the changing table, sometimes there's multiple options. Ask the flight attendant so you don't have to go searching around to pick the right one. You'll probably want to have either some type of wipes or a changing pad. Our little Kibu, the, the little fanny pack, has a little changing pad that we can lay down for our baby to sit on as we change her diaper. And we also recommend bringing little scented trash bags that look like little doggy bags that you can put your diaper in so that it doesn't stink up the plane. <laughs> Okay, the toughest parts of the flight for your baby are gonna be the takeoff and the landing, and that's because they can't equalize their ears without our help. So what we do, what I do, <laughs> let's be clear, is I breastfeed my baby upon takeoff and upon landing. Now, if she's sleeping, I still try to basically dream feed her because I want her to be able to swallow to equalize her ears. Now, some people say just let a baby, a sleeping baby sleep, I say, feed the baby, whether it's um, breastfeeding, bottle feeding, or even a pacifier, just something to allow them to suck, swallow, and then equalize their ears. They will be so much happier. You don't want a crying baby after all. And the reason being is you could wait and the baby might wake up crying and they might be too fussy to then actually latch back on or start feeding. So it's, we kind of take the proactive approach to make sure that she has a good, pleasant flight. And now the last thing, when you are departing the plane, don't forget what I said about everything having a place. Hopefully you haven't left any pillows behind. But also, breathe, take a breath. It's okay that people are going to wait a few extra moments for you to disembark the plane. Like every other parent out there, this has been done before. It's okay to take some time for yourself. Thank you for watching till the end. Now here is the quick list of all the tried and true gear that we love to travel with. First thing is the Bugaboo Butterfly Stroller. Absolutely great, folds down with one hand and it fits into the carry-on size. Next thing is the Ergo Baby Carrier. This is a lifesaver when traveling through the airport, gives you free hands to do with what you need to. Next up is the Saris Chill Breast Milk Chiller. So instead of bringing a bulky cooler with you, you can bring this just small thermos with you that keeps your breast milk cool for 20 hours. You could also keep it frozen if you need it to. Uh, and that is going to be 15% off if you guys use the code Romaru. So check it out. Next up is the No Reception Club diaper bag. This is what I use for diapers and for everything that I bring on board. It is our go-to carry-on bag. The other one is our small fanny pack. It is the Kibu diaper bag. 
Now, this is the trendiest little pink diaper bag, but we love it because it is easy to carry. It's got just the essentials. And when you're in an airplane bathroom, you don't have enough room for a full size diaper bag. And two things we didn't mention in the video, but we bring them with us everywhere is our Nuna Pippa Light RX car seat. This is what we use at home. You can have the base at home and then you can bring the car seat with you and use it in taxis, Ubers, and any rental car. You don't need the base when you're traveling with it. The other thing that we always travel with is our Nanit baby monitor. This is so clutch to bring with you and it just connects to any hotel Wi-Fi or Airbnb Wi-Fi and you can see the baby on your phone. Well, thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm Scott. And I'm Colette. And we are Romru and be sure to get out there and travel. Yes, we have confidence in you guys. So if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe below. That's right. Happy Excellent. travels. Bye. Here we go.